There are two things I would like you to contemplate from today's Gospels and Scriptures. The first is from the responsorial psalm. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And the second is Jesus' request in the Gospels. Give me a drink. With the hardening of hearts, this one rings in my ears because the line is from the invitatory psalm. It's the psalm that is said by all religious at the beginning of every day to guard against the hardening of the heart. And so it echoes. But the hardening of the heart. The hardening of the heart comes in two ways. The first is through repetition. Every day we receive solicitations in the mail. Last night I received five. Every day we see panhandlers at the same intersections in our city. And every day we see the need that is all around us and overwhelms us and we build up callous and we harden our heart. I can tell you that I have had my heart hardened. I've grown up in Worcester. I spent four years in Chicago and one very jarring weekend in Philadelphia and my heart was hardened. And the second way our heart is hardened is through cynicism. The constant whispers that we hear that try to turn us from responding to the call of God. That if we give money, it will be used ineffectively. And if we give, how much will really help? If there are 12 causes that are bundled together and there's one that does not suit our fancy, we give to none. And the cynicism doesn't spur us to be creative or to try harder, but it serves as an excuse and a reason not to act. But today's gospel confronts us, and we have to answer Christ's request, give me a drink. It's very direct. Now we're used to the more common verse, whatsoever you do for the least of my brothers, you do unto me. But this time, Christ is direct. Christ is not in the homeless person at the corner of Park and Highland. Christ is not the elderly person in the nursing home. Christ is unhidden, sitting next to the well. And he speaks to us directly. Give me a drink. But in today's gospel, Christ never gets a drink of that water. And yet, he is satisfied. Christ never partakes of the food that the apostles were sent to get, and yet he is sustained. And that is because that the water that Christ speaks of is faith. The wellspring within that does not fail into everlasting life. The faith that comes from within the woman at the well is what Christ thirsts for. The faith of the village around the well that draws Christ in, that he spends two days with, is what Christ thirsts for. But there is also the food. Doing the work of the Father is the food. Christ is sustained beyond earthly food through doing good works of the Father and through bringing the wellspring of faith alive in each of us. And yet even still, our hearts are hardened. We are hardened to a response of generosity and love. We are hardened against a sharing of our faith, and we are hardened against doing the works of the Father. What Christ really wants and what he seeks and finds in the woman at the well is the spring of faith that wells up within her. It's important for us as followers of Christ, and particularly now in this time of Lent, and particularly here in one of the scrutinies for those who will be in the RCIA program, we need to find concrete ways to respond to Christ's request 
give me a drink. We need to find ways to respond to the people that we see with love and generosity. We need to share our faith with those who ask us, give us a drink. Very soon we will all be out on the streets and we will be confronted by Christ. We will be asked to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to care for the poor, and we must work together to guard against the hardening of our hearts.